Hey there, Ramblers and Rovers. I am Miguel, and today we are exploring the magnificent ruins of Uxmal in southern Yucatan, here in Mexico. Uxmal is one of the most magnificent Mayan sites in the whole of the Yucatan Peninsula and it is a site that has been that has been inhabited since 500 before Christ and it has some of the most impressive structures in my opinion in the entire peninsula it is an incredible place you have to visit especially if you're like passing through Merida and it is one of the most representative, one of the most beautiful sites in the whole, in, in, in the region. So it has to be, make a top spot on your bucket list for sure. So come with us and explore what this site has to offer at some of the history and hopefully we can entice you to come here and experience this for yourself. So starting off on our journey through Uxmal, we begin at the main structure, one of the largest structures in the whole site called the House of the Shaman, or La Casa del Brujo in Spanish. Known for its unique circular construction, it just towers above us and just even like so many centuries after the abandonment of this site still dominates over the region and just shows how powerful this city was in ancient times. I feel dwarfed in its shadow. Not that there's any shadow in like this hot country, but you know what I mean. And as we're walking here through the site, we can still see like the tropical lushness of vegetation in Yucatan. It's so many birds and so many different creatures flitting around the trees or skittering around the, the forest floor. This is the Puk region. It is the one region in the entire Yucatan where there are any semblance of hills and it is a, one of the, the hottest and one of the driest regions in the entire Yucatan Peninsula. So as you can see I'm wearing like a brother hat than I would usually do because it's so it's so hot here. It has to be like almost 100 degrees Fahrenheit or around 40 degrees Celsius and very dry and very strong sun. So but it's still so beautiful to be out here in the forest in this site and to enjoy taking photographs of all these different creatures and animals and just seeing all the different kinds of like exotic birds that are here it just adds to the sense of exoticness and mystique of Uxmal. So we are inside one of the colonnaded buildings here in Uxmal and this is very representative of the unique Puk style of Mayan architecture. Thin, long halls with expansive colonnades and tall vaulted ceilings. And I think that the explanation for why this architectural style developed here in particular is obvious and that is because of the heat because the heat will, will, have, will leave because of the circulation and will rise because of, oh, there are so many flies here, and will rise because of its natural thermodynamics. So 
as we can see, you know, like the indigenous peoples who lived here were well adapted to this kind of climate, were well adapted to this part of the world. And it's just a testament to how long they have been living here and how much of a cultural, geographical and spiritual heritage they had to the, this place in particular. So it's just interesting to see and being here, like understand why. I mean, and just being inside here, it just feels so cool versus being out there, <laughs> I mean. So, yeah. So when you're inside these buildings, it has to be uh, at least a 10, 15 degree temperature difference. And it's so humid inside here. It's almost like having like natural air conditioning just by virtue of how it was constructed and the materials that it was constructed with. I mean, <laughs> if you need like a cool respite, just like come inside here. Enjoy the birds a little that live inside these places now and just cool up. I mean, the entire side outside there is just so full of swallows. It's so beautiful. As you can see behind me, you can see these triple stacked heads of Chak, the rain and thunder god. And this inner courtyard, which must have functioned as like a palatial complex, it just has so many details on its facades. And this being a post-classical Mayan site, one that flourished in the late, in the latter history of the ancient Maya, it, it conserves a lot of its details and also like the style by that time had developed in such a way that it was very elaborate but also the Mayans from this particular region this particular king, Mayan kingdom really took it a step further and just doubled down on the details and the patterns and the decorations and it, it is when I envision Mayan civilization, this is the architectural style that I envision. And it is, it is incredible. So this, that's one of the reasons why this is one of my favorite sites to visit. So just as a little bit of, of uh, history, in ancient times, Mayan kingdoms would have been more 
akin to like the ancient Greeks in the sense that you would have had these very powerful city-states that were very famous, very renowned for their capacity for their capacity to wage war, to build up, to control trade, to have religious influence over like their neighbors in the same way that you in ancient Greece you would have had Athens and Sparta and they would go to war with each other for control over all these different other smaller cities, states and like the, the, just kind of like the color, the mythology, the symbolism and religious significance of like the motives and just the rich mythology, like it's all here. It would have looked very similar to things that we already know but have not been really popularized in well, popular culture. Laura, do you have some bark in your with you? Oh no, I left mine in the car too, and that would be beautiful. Yeah, I was like, So they call this whole courtyard the quadrangle of the nuns because at the time of the conquest or like when the first European explorers came here, they thought that it looked like a nunnery from somewhere else. But in reality, it was a political and ceremonial center and probably one of the living beating hearts of political and religious life here in Ushpal. I mean, you don't go through the trouble of building this if you don't, if you're not gonna use it for something grand. So we are now in the ball, the ball court of Ushmal. There are two different sides or walls where there would have been these rings. And this is where the Mayans played the sacred ball game called Poktapok in the Mayan language. And which was, had a lot of religious significance. We have seen representations or modern takes on what this would have looked like in Merida but this is where they actually played it and its significance to Mayan culture cannot be overstated. In the Popol Vuh, the sacred book of the Quiche peoples, one of the few remaining written records of the Mayan people, the mythical hero twins of legend go to the underworld to play a game of ball with the death gods and after they win they vanquish them so there's there's a lot of religious significance to this it's associated with life death and like all these different cycles and religious um, meanings and so this is where like the the magic happened so you can just picture strong hardy mayan warriors because you had to be strong and hardy to play this game smacking a six pound rubber ball with their hips, with their elbows, with their knees. I mean, it was such a heavy ball that ball players had to wear protective armor to play this game. And actually archeologists can tell who was a ball player because their bones will be deformed in a certain way. So it's like playing soccer with a cannonball. So right below me, this 
would have been a chultun, one of the cisterns, artificial cisterns or artificial cenotes built by the ancient Mayans to channel rainwater to store for the dry season. And as you can see behind me, it's pretty dry right now. This is one of the driest regions of Yucatan. So water was stored here, covered over and protected, and then used sparingly during the dry season to keep sustaining the city through the worst of the heat and the worst of like the dryness. Ingenious ways of finding how to live in a hostile environment or in a, in a harsh environment, and not only that, but to find ways to actually prosper and create something of worth from this, this land. So just a few words on how to get here to Uxmal from Mérida. Mérida will be the closest large city from where you can make your way down here. The site is maybe an hour and a half drive from south from, from Mérida. And the most comfortable and but also the most expensive thing would be to take a tour here and but there are also plenty of buses that leave from the bus stations in Merida that leave you here and then other buses that go back to Merida. So it would just be a matter of coordinating like the times when you would want to be here. Again, it's one of the most hot, it's, it's insanely hot here. I mean, it's a couple degrees short of hell. So it'll, it's worth it for this side in particular especially if you're here in like the hotter seasons to come earlier so that you are probably leaving around midday or a little after midday so that you are not here for the hottest parts of the day or maybe on a day that's a little more overcast and you're not as affected by the sun. So just a few friendly tips on how to make the most of this incredible cultural jungle adventure out here, the Yucatan wilderness. Behind me is the Temple of the Macaus. It's one of the major temples here in Uxmal and it just kind of is a testament to how long the city was inhabited and to how it developed over time as it dates from the mid 8th century. And all these different temples and all these different palaces were built successively as the city grew, as it became more powerful, as it came to dominate the entire Polk region. There are still ruins all around, all around us, especially over here where we can see those stone, those piles of stone here in the distance. Those are the remains of structures. Most structures in the central part of the main cities in the ancient Mayan world were built from stone so many of them over time have collapsed owing to like the elements to um, weathering and I mean a number of any number of factors but exploration is still ongoing at this site and it's just incredible to think that like as much as we're seeing and as rich a history and a glimpse into the past as we're getting, it is still not the full picture. I mean, even over there, we can see, we can see the remains of even more large, magnificent structures. So I just cannot wait for the archeologists to keep digging and see what they find here and just keep learning about this magnificent civilization. I mean, behind me, you have the governor's palace and it is monumental. Even by our standards, like our modern like ideas of dimensions and space, I mean, this a thousand years ago would have been incredible. I mean, these are the signs of a very capable, very advanced, very smart civilization. I, I'm left speechless. I really am. I'm just overcome by like the awe of. Uh, of these places and these peoples and like just I mean just imagine what went on here a thousand years ago you know like the princely marriages between 
members of different cities, you know, like the great house or kings and lords presiding over these magnificent, colorful, vibrant ceremonies. I mean, it's, it's, it's history. It's the memories of an entire people. You know, they left were these crumbling piles of stones. Kind of makes you think, like, what, it, what will happen to everything we hold important in a thousand years? You know, I'm sure they must have thought that it would have lasted, like that a city like this must endure for eternity, but, you know, nothing does. So right behind me, on top of this platform here, you have a jaguar throne. Jaguars, for the Mayans, were considered as a spiritual animal, one that represented like priesthood and, and spirituality, one with great power. So the Ahaus, the lords of the cities, would use them as the motives on their throne. So this jaguar throne is, have, is very rare. It's a very rare artifact. And this is where the, uh, the great house of Ushmal would have sat to hold court to rule over this magnificent city. So just like in Game of Thrones, you know, it's the Iron Throne, the Iron Throne, the Iron Throne. For the Mayans, it's the Jaguar Throne. So this magnificent palace behind me would have been the palace of the royalty of Ushmal here on this great flat expanse that towering above the city lying opposite to the temple of the shaman back there and Temple of the Magician, sorry, I think is what they call it in English. So this is where mo court would have, would have been held around political, military, and social, social matters of importance here in the city. And inaccessible for commoners like us, right? So it's a kind of a privilege to be here standing among the palaces of these ancient kings. Oh, it is such a hot day here. More flies. I just want to give you guys some more tips before you come here. Bring water and lots of it. Bring a broad brimmed hat and bring cool, preferably white, breezy clothing that lets you, your body breathe. Beautiful. I mean it is so hot here I mean the one thing I am craving is like a glass of cool cool ice cold water preferably or even like 
an electro an electrolyte or vitamin water I don't know some just anything refreshing I just want anything that's like refreshing right now that's what my body needs so you guys have the advantage here when you were watching this video so I beseech you bring at least two or three liters of water per person I guarantee you you'll drink them all before you leave here So we have reached the end of our journey around Uchmal. I hope you guys found it interesting. I hope that this video inspired you to come here yourselves and make use of some of our travel tips and just come here, experience this for yourselves. This is a magnificent city. This is a great way to connect with the landscape and to have an authentic Yucatec experience here, just an hour's drive south of Merida. So if you guys like this video, remember to like the video and subscribe to my channel. It helps us a lot. Share our content and just keep on rambling and roving and we'll catch you in the next adventure. Can I have my sunstroke now? Yeah. But don't drink all my water. <sighs> Thank God. Uh, thirsty? <laughs>